By the end of this video, we're going to add a hotbar to our game, where when we go to our inventory, we'll be able to drag items into the hotbar, press the corresponding key. So I'm going to press key number one. In our console, we'll see using item potion, as that's our green potion we picked up. If I press number two, you can see using item heart since that's our heart potion name. We're also going to be able to save our game. So when we close it and reload, our hotbar items will be where we left them, as well as our inventory. Now, just a warning, this video heavily relies on you doing the previous inventory tutorial as we're reusing the prefabs and scripts from those tutorials. So I'm going to link those below, but cool, let's check it out. So first of all, let's do the UI for our hotbar. I've got a UI game object, which holds our canvas for our UI. And if we expand this, we can see all our UI within this. I'm going to right click on UI and go UI panel and rename this hotbar. Now we're going to want our hotbar down the bottom, but to the left of our item pop-up container. So I'm going to go left 350, top 980, and right 150. In a previous video, we made slots for our inventory so we can drag and drop items around. We're going to reuse these slot prefabs inside my prefab folder for our hotbar slots. So if I drag and drop a couple of these onto our hotbar, you can see they're all just stacking. Like we've done with our other UI pieces, I'm going to click on our hotbar, add a new component, and add a horizontal layout group. I'm going to child align to middle center. And now when we add some more slots to our hotbar, these will automatically space out nicely. If we press play, I can show you if we drag this item now down, these slots already work. Very cool. I'm going to delete these slots now as we're going to write a script to dynamically add these in. So back on our hotbar object, let's click add component, new script, and call this hotbar controller. Inside here, we're going to want a public game object for our hotbar panel a public game object for our slot prefab, a public int for our slot count. And I'm gonna default this to 10. Since for our hotbar, I'm going to be using one to zero on the keyboard, which is 10 numbers. And to get this working with our saving, we're also gonna want a private item dictionary, which I'll call item dictionary. And so we can use our items in our hotbar. We're gonna want private key array, so square brackets, which I'll call hotbar keys. So this is going to store our one to zero key binds on the keyboard. If we hover over key and do show potential fixes, we're going to want to be using unity engine.input system. If you haven't followed the tutorial fully and this doesn't work for you, you may need to install the package in the package manager, looking for unity engine input system. But cool, we're not going to want this start, but we are going to want an awake. Well, we'll first set up our item dictionary and go item dictionary equals find object of type item dictionary. And then we'll go hotbar keys equals new key and pass in our slot count to make the array the size that we want. Then we'll go for int i. Can you hear that fire engine? Equals zero. i is less than slot count i plus plus and say hotbar keys square brackets i equals i is less than nine question mark brackets key. Then outside the brackets, another brackets and another inside that pass in int. So we're passing key dot digit one plus i and then outside the brackets again you want colon key dot digit zero what this is basically saying is if our slot is less than nine we're going to store a key of the number of our slot plus one and then on our final slot we're defaulting to our digit zero cool hopefully that makes sense cool next in our update we want to check for key presses so i'm going to copy this for loop from above paste it down below and go squiggly brackets if keyboard.current and pass in our hotbar keys, square brackets, i, then type dot was pressed this frame, then we'll go squiggly brackets, and this is where we'll call a function to use our item that's stored in our hotbar slot. So let's write that function. We're going to want to go void use item in slot. We'll take in a parameter of the index so we know which slot we want to check. So int index in the parameters. Then we'll go slot, slot equals hotbar panel dot transform dot get child brackets index dot get component pass in slot and brackets. So we're going to get the child that matches the index that we're passing in that has been pressed and then grab the slot off of that object. Then say if slot dot current item does not equal null. So there is an item in that slot. We'll go item item equals slot dot current item dot get component item. And then we can call our item dot use item. Ha, red squiggly underlined. This does not exist yet. So let's go back to Unity, go to our scripts folder and go to our item script. In here, let's add a new function 
So public virtual void use item. For now, I'm just going to go debug.log brackets using item plus passing our name. I've made this virtual. So derived or inherited classes can override this function and make it do whatever it needs to do. Say if it's a health item, you'd want it to be consumed and then destroyed. If it was a weapon, you'd want it to do the attack animation and not be destroyed. So with virtual, you're setting up that these items can be used, but obviously they might be used in different ways. Cool, we'll leave it at that for now. Back in our hotbar controller script, let's finish off this using item section by copying use item in slot and putting it up in our if statement in the update. We'll go use item in slot brackets, I, semicolon. Cool, very easy. Next, hopefully you followed the inventory tutorials because I'm going to cheat here to set up the saving for our hotbar. So on our inventory controller script, I'm going to copy the get inventory items and the set inventory items functions. So highlight these and press control C to copy. Back to our hotbar controller script, we'll go to the bottom and paste these in. I'm going to rename this to be get hotbar items and set hotbar items. We're going to want to change inventory panel to be hotbar panel in both places. Scroll down, we've got a couple more hotbar panels we need to replace into inventory panels or the other way around, inventory panel into hotbar panel. And anywhere it says inventory, I'm just going to change to say hotbar. Cool. So now we're going to need to go to our save data and I'm going to hold down control and D to duplicate this line. Change it from inventory save data to hotbar save data. Go to our save controller and at the top we're going to duplicate this inventory controller, change that to hotbar controller, rename this hotbar controller, duplicate this line again, you see how you can reuse code hotbar controller, hotbar controller, very nice. In our save game we'll go comma hotbar save data equals hotbar controller dot get hotbar items and in our load game we'll duplicate Go hotbar controller, set hotbar items to be our hotbar save data. Now that's all we need to add saving in. So let's go back to Unity. Go to our hotbar and in the hotbar panel, drag in our hotbar. And in the slot prefab, go to our prefabs folder and drag in our slot. If I press play, we can now open our menu, go to our inventory, drag a heart potion into the second slot. If I press number two, you can see in our console using heart item. Very cool. If I drag this green potion into the first slot using item potion. Very cool. I'll pick up another item just so we've got a bit more. Let's move these around somewhere funky. Cool. Let's go to our settings and press save. Now if I exit out our game, load back in, our items are in their slots. We can use them still using heart, using potion. Very cool. And that's our hotbar all working. So hopefully this works for you. If you do want to make a hotbar and you didn't follow the tutorial, then you can check out the inventory videos. I'll link those below. Or if you don't have the time, you can grab this whole template for half price right now, as we've got only like half the features in. And after purchasing, you will get all the future updates for free. So everything in this coming soon and anything else I do think of. And there is a lot to come still. Very exciting. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.